I'm just opening uh, Srila Prabhupada's purpose. Just a minute, dear devotees. So, as you can see, in the text 20 and 21, it is recommended dharana for a yogi. Uh, dharana is recommended. But how is that dharana? Uh, and who's the object of that dharana? That was not mentioned, right? So the object of dharana is something that we'd be seeing in today's verse, depending upon what kind of yogi, whether the yogi is failing dharana process or if the yogi has perfected the dharana process, the object of meditation is going to be different for those two kinds of people. So the people, uh, I mean, who can start meditating on that Sakshat Bhagavan, who's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the beautiful Krishna form? Who can do that? If people are passionate or ignorant, they can't meditate on that form. It's very difficult for them. See, if you're too much into some business and if your business is failing, you know, it's going, it's, you are just going through a loss in your business. And now, if, if we are we a kind of person who are, who is free from dualities and who doesn't care, oh, it's all Krishna's mercy, whatever I get, it's his mercy and you leave it and not worry about that. Or you keep thinking about your material problems. And if you're keeping on thinking about the material problems, then for you, the object of meditation can't be Sakshat Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You can't meditate on the beautiful form of Krishna. Okay, then what is the solution for those people who uh, are not eligible or who are failing in the dharana process? What is the recommendation for them? We need to know that, right? Because there are people uh, who, 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 who have their money different material things for their perfect process. So that is what is being clarified. Our acharyas are giving different uh, commentaries here with regards to that. So uh, badram means they say auspiciousness. That which gives or uh, that which gives happiness, meaning auspiciousness. This is what uh, Vishnu Chakruti Takura says with regards to the object of meditation. So that object of meditation is Sukatmakam. It is full of bliss and it gives happiness. Then Parikshit Maharaj also got, uh, what is, see he also got the same doubt. Now what is this Badram Ashraya that you are talking about? Parikshit Maharaj asked Sukadev Goswami, what is, what is the word Yatra Dharana? Means Dharana should be performed. On what Dharana should be performed? That is what is being answered in 23rd verse. Stule Bhagavate Rupe. You have to worship uh, that object of meditation who is Stule Bhagavate Rupe. So now, uh, the success of 
performance is achieved only by the help of devotional attitude. But many times, this kind of explanation we may not easily get from the purport. Right? So, uh, that's why the kind of some subtle things that may not be clear to us. Most of the time, it's not clear to us. Prabhupada also said, after reading books, you can refer to Acharya's books. If you want to go and get a deeper understanding of the quotes that I am talking about, you have to get, because Prabhupada quotes the previous Acharyas. So this is what he does. And if you have to get that relevance, you have to go into the purport of the Acharyas to get the relevance of it. The success of even mystic performance is achieved with the help of devotional attitude. Devotional attitude uh, is what is helping even with the mystic yoga. Right? One is not, however, elevated to a successful status without the tinge of mixture of devotional service. This is what Prabhupada quotes. The devotional atmosphere is created. Uh, uh, you know, when that is created, then only any process he does, you get benefit. So, there is the, the why Prabhupada is discussing this point here are, um, you know, if you were to ask, Srila Vishnu Chakravati Takura is saying, if someone uh, the object of meditation is that Bhadram Ashrayam, it is that aus auspicious object, then okay, one meditates on that auspicious uh, object, if he starts doing, then what will happen to that yogi? That yogi, so that kind of yogi will be achieving the yoga. The yoga means what kind of yoga? Bhakti Lakshana Yoga. That is why Prabhupada quotes a devotional attitude is necessary for even performing that yoga. So, there, is, there are two kinds of yogis, I told you, right? One is, if bhakti is gauna, if bhakti is secondary, that is called bhakti mishra yogi. If bhakti is primary, it is called yoga mishra bhakti. So, even if bhakti is gauna, even that can lead to liberation. Even Bhakti is not even, uh, bhakti is not even, what do you call it? It is not even primary. This person is just having a tinge of bhakti. Even if he has a tinge of bhakti, it could lead him to liberation. And that is called bhakti mishra yoga. Okay. So now, uh, then what about a person who has bhakti as primary and yoga as secondary? That person can attain shantarati. He can even go to the abode of the Lord and serve the Lord in shantarati. But anyways, so this is the point, dear devotees. One of the important points we need to understand is uh, hmm, you know what? What we need to understand is obviously uh, bhakti is needed even to perfect the yoga process. It could be bhakti mishra yoga or yoga mishra bhakti. But in either case, you need to have bhakti. Without that, you cannot go into liberation. You cannot get into liberation. This is the point Srila Prabhupada clarifies. And then, dear devotees, what else is being talked about in the purport? So so far clear uh, in terms of. We have this yogi and this yogi, his dharana is not able to continuously meditate on the object of meditation because there is still some passion and ignorance in him. This kind of yogi, for him, what is that object of meditation? This is the question we are trying to get answered. Okay? And um, so for one who has perfected the dharana process, there is an object of meditation. Who is Lord Krishna, Bhagavan, Sakshat Bhagavan could be the object of meditation for that person who has perfected the dharana process. But there is another type of person who has not perfected this process yet. So for him, what is the object of meditation? This is the question we have put forward. And then we spoke about the concept of uh, Bhakti Mishra Yoga. There it is Bhunibhuta Bhakti. Bhakti Mishra Yoga means what? Yoga is prominent and Bhakti is little actually. So it is called Bhuni Bhuta Bhakti. And I told you about another Bhakti where uh, Bhakti is prominent and Yoga is Mishra or little. That kind of Bhakti is Pradhani Bhuta Bhakti. And in Bhagavad Gita 8th chapter, we are seeing uh, about that Pradhani Bhuta Bhakti. That Yoga Mishra Bhakti, where it is talked about in the 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So for a yogi who is failing to worship, who is failing to meditate on the direct form of the Lord, for him, dharana is recommended. Dharana is recommended for him. And he should uh, he should meditate on that form. And that form is virat ruka. 
that Bhadra Maharaya is nothing but Virat Rupa. So this is what is the clarification. This person has not, uh, he, he is not perfected the dharana process yet. And so he has, for him, dharana is recommended since he's not perfected it. And for him, what is the object of meditation? For him, the object of meditation is Virat Rupa. Are you all clear, dear devotees? So this is, this is the point. Now, uh, if you're asking, um, uh, what is the result of Nishkam Karma Yoga? It is purifying the heart. That will also, um, again, purifying the heart will not also happen without some bhakti. Even for Nishkam Karma Yoga, bhakti is needed. So, that's why Nishkam Karma Yogi, what he does? He does offering of that results to the Lord. He doesn't want to be attached to anything in this world, right? So, he offers it to the Lord. Now the question arises, dear devotees, is this Nishkama Karma Yogi who wants to purify his heart because he knows material things or material results are the problem for my uh, progress. So I, and it is causing distress to me. So I need to purify my heart. I need to be detached from the dualities. I need to be detached from material uh, attachments. And for that, for his, for that, he needs to offer it to the Lord. Now the question arises, Will, uh, is he offering the result with love? No. He is offering out of Tyaga Buddhi. Tyaga Buddhi means detachment. He is also a yogi. Right? He is not a devotee. He is a yogi. He is just doing it. Nishkam Karma Yogi. He is just doing it because he's, he wants to be detached from it. Is he offering to Lord with love? No. But again, what we are noting here, the point to be noted is he, again, bhakti is involved. Even for Nishkam Karma Yoga to be successful, we need bhakti. Right? Without a tinge of, it could be bhakti mishra yoga, no problem. But even then, tinge of bhakti is needed. Nishkam Karma, karma, karma Yoga will not give its result without bhakti. Naishkarnyam api achyuta bhava varjitam. Nashobate nyanam alam niranjana. So, if you look at this verse 1.5.12, that means karma is done, um, you know, without expectation of any result. If you were to do nishkam karma, yoga, without any expectation of result, you are not expecting anything, but you do nishkam karma yoga, that means you are detached, you want to purify your heart. If it is not offered to the Lord, then what is the point? Then would you be getting some results out of it? No. It is useless. Nashobate. So anything, any process, even for Nish, the point here that I want to stress or have, have you all be attentive to this point is even if Nishkam Karma Yoga has to be successful, you need Bhakti. You are leaving, you, you are giving the results to Ishwara. If you don't do that, then it's useless labor. Okay, so that is what that verse 1.5.12 from Srimad Bhagavatam talks about. Now, so if Nishkam Karma Yoga is not going to give result, will Yoga Sadhana give you result without Bhakti? Is it going to give you Moksha without Bhakti? Never. It is not going to give you. So, this verse, uh, I think it's 25th verse. The fortunate King Parikshit, inquiring further, said, O Brahmana, please describe in full how and where the mind has to be applied, how the conception can be fixed so the dirty things in person's mind can be removed. So, he is asking. Who is asking? Parikshit Maharaj is asking Sukadeva Goswami. If whose mind is affected by rajas and tamas, you recommended they should do dharana. And now the question comes, dharana on what? Dharana on an auspicious object. So, now he is asking, how do we do that? Yata sandhar yate. Take that word yata. He's telling how, how to do that. And that means on whom dharana should be done. Next question. Yadarshi. There are three questions he's posing. So first question he's asking is, uh, how do I do that? What is the process to do that meditation on that auspicious object? And then on whom the dharana should be done? So these are the questions Parikshit Maharaj is posing to Sukadev Goswami. 
So the person who is not able to do direct devotional service, direct means directly meditating on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So whoever is not able to do that, that person's case is discussed here. Then why Parikshit Maharaj is just going in, into this? Why is he digging so much? How to do that? Where to do that? Why he's asking all this question? You may wonder, right? What is the problem? He, you know, Pusukte Goswami is a pure devotee of the Lord. And why he should be asking these questions? How do you do that? Where you should do that? What is the process? And who should be the object of meditation for this Dharana worshipper? Our Acharya, Srila Vishnu Chakravati Pad is saying, it is just out of curiosity only. It is not he wants to decide to do practice that process. Only curiosity. Why, why doesn't he want to practice? Question may come. Okay, you are saying, okay, he doesn't want to practice. Why doesn't he want to practice? That also comes up, right? Why he is digging so much? That would be the first question. And now you get an answer. Oh, he's digging because it's just out of his curiosity. It's not the desire for him to practice it. This was the answer our Acharya is giving. And now, another question comes. Why does he want to practice? Why? Because he's a Sishya. He's a disciple of whom? He's a disciple of our dear Sukadeva Goswami. So that's why he's not interested to this kind of dharana. No way. Because why? Because he is a disciple of our dear Sukadeva Goswami. He will always be interested in Shuddha Bhakti only. Not in Mishra Bhakti. Right? So, the dirty things in the heart of a conditioned soul are the root cause for all troubles for him. The dirty things in the heart, Prabhupada is writing this, dirty things in the heart of a conditioned soul are the root cause for the troubles for him. A conditioned soul, he is surrounded by many fold uh, miseries of material existence. But on the account of his gross ignorance, he is unable to remove the troubles due to the dirty things in his heart. It is accumulated uh, for a long time. Because he has been in the long time in this material world, it is very difficult for those dirty things in the heart to be removed. So this person, he is actually meant to serve the will of the Supreme Lord. Because he has these dirty desires, dirty things in the heart. He has to serve. Instead of serving his desires, these desires, instead of giving him peace of mind, it's creating new problems. All the while, new problems. These desires, you think it is going to give you a good uh, good news. Oh yeah, you'll be happy and you'll be peaceful. I'll not, uh, you, you, this, is, this is why you have to keep desiring more and more. No, what it is doing. It doesn't give you peace of mind. On top of it, it's creating new problems. And then, it binds you to the cycle of repeated birth and death. So, these are. this is what is the uh, situation of a person whose heart is affected by rajas and tamas. We have to talk, we are talking about that person only here. Isn't it? The person who is affected by rajas and tamas is the sort of person who, is, who we are talking about. These dirty things of fruit to work uh, can be removed only by associating with the Supreme Lord. The Lord is omnipotent. He can offer his association by his inconceivable potencies. Thus, persons uh, who are unable to pin their faith on the personal feature of the Lord, they have a chance now. These people are having a chance to associate with whom? To associate with the Virat Rupa or the cosmic impersonal feature of the Lord. Cosmic impersonal feature of the Lord is a feature of his unlimited potencies. You are able to understand. A person who cannot directly medit meditate on the form of the Lord, those will be given the Virat Rupa meditation. Hope you are getting the point, dear devotees. Maharaj Parikshit was already directly connected to the personal feature of the Lord. He is directly connected to the uh, personal feature of the Lord, Lord Krishna. So as such, he doesn't have to inquire to Sukadev Goswami about where and how to apply the mind of the impersonal. So now, the point is, 
how, no need, it is, it is not needed for Parikshit Maharaj to inquire from Sukadev Goswami about where and how to apply the mind in the impersonal feature of the Lord or impersonal draft group of the Lord. But then he inquired after a deep, this detailed description of matter for benefit of others who are unable to conceive the transcendental feature of the Lord. Again, this transcendental personal feature of the Lord is a form of eternity, knowledge and bliss. Sachitananda Rupa. You are able to understand the devotees why he is inquiring about it for the benefit of others. Um, so, now he is asking this question, how to do dharana on this Padram Ashram, the auspicious object, that is the Virat Rupa. He is saying, because he wants to do, he is asking question for others sake. They have a, a they have a sort of poor estimation of the potency of the Lord. Generally, people who are materialistic, they don't believe in the personal form of the Lord. For them, to help them, the sum total of cosmic manifestation of the creation is there so that they can understand that form. So they understand that the body of the Lord, oh yeah, this yogi, he understands the body of the Lord. He imagines uh, various uh, planetary systems in the body of the Lord. This Virat Rupa meditator, the neophyte yogi, he'll be able to meditate on the Virat Rupa. And finally, what happens to this yogi? Then he should reach to a stage where he will have the eligibility to worship the personal feature of the Lord. That is the Antaryami of the Virat. That is, who is the Antaryami of the Virat? Antaryami means super soul. Okay? Who is the super soul of that Virat? This person, who is this Dharana worshipper, who have, who is filled with Rajas and Tamas, right? He is filled with Rajas and Tamas now. He starts meditating on the Badram Ashram. And what is that Badram Ashram? It is the Virat root form. Okay? After some time, this yogi should be purified, isn't it? After that time, after that time, he becomes eligible to worship on the Antaryami of Virat. Now he is worshipping the Virat. But after some time, what happens to him? He starts to worship on the Antaryami of the Virat. And who is the Antaryami of the Virat? Anybody knows? Antaryami means, I told you, the super soul. Who is that? Anybody knows? Can answer? If not, I can tell. Okay, so the Antaryami of the Virat is Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. This is the goal, okay, of this meditating, uh, of this yogi. He has to finally come to a stage where he will be able to meditate on Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. That is the stage of his perfection. Till then, what he will be doing? He will continue to do dharana on this object of meditation, which is Virat. Okay, dear devotees, this is this is what you probably seen earlier. But anyways, we will. Uh, I just wanted to give you sort of overview of all this because this gives you a frame of reference for what we are doing. Again, so now he is asking three questions. Who's asking? Parikshit Maharaj. So the first question is about asana. How we are supposed to sit? I mean, how is this person? So the sitting posture is being described here. Sukadev Goswami is trying to answer to the question of Parikshit Maharaj. He is saying, Prabhupada's uh, translation says, one should control the sitting posture, regulate the breathing by the yogic pranayama and thus control the mind and the senses uh, with intelligence, apply the mind to the gross potencies of the Lord called the Viratrupa. So he should do asana. That means he should be able to sit in one place successfully um, without shaking or hearing, going here and there. It has to be steady. He has to steadily sit. He has to conquer his sitting posture. That's why yama, niyama and asana are recommended. We know. Um, so that then comes the pranayama stage. And pranayama, he tries to control. Of course, you are in dharana. Why you have to perform these stages? These are all prerequisites for him to get... See, he has to do these things to be able to do dharana. Okay. So, why prana? Can we directly not do dharana? No. You have to go through those three. First, yama, niyama, the do's, don'ts. Then you do the asana. That is the sitting portion. That is being clarified here where 
you conquer the sitting posture by not shaking, not doing anything. You just focus and be seated in a proper position. This way, what happens? You are able to control your breathing. And when you are able to control your breathing, that is pranayama, then eventually you should be able to do dharana where your mind is also controlled with the intelligence. But again, this yogi's mind is not yet controlled. That is why his object of meditation is Bhadram Ashrayam, which is the Virat group. Okay. Now, um, so, uh, the second question he is asking is, uh, where to meditate? First question was about the posture, right? The second question is, where to meditate? Uh, no, sorry, so what to meditate? That is the second question. Stule Bhagavate Rupe. The yogi who is not able to meditate on the antaryami of the Lord, that means his heart is not yet purified, right? Then this yogi should do what? He should do meditation on the Virat Roop. And why he has to meditate on the Virat Roop? This question will come, right? Why? What is the purpose? What is the purpose? I told you already. The purpose is to come, up, come out of the effects of Rajas and Tamas, right? This person is having this problem of, problem or issue of rajas and tamas. That's why his art is not yet purified. That's why he is not eligible to worship on the antaryami of the Lord at this stage. So what is the effect of doing the meditation on the virat root? The effect is his rajas and tamas is going to go away. Okay. Um, so he has to come out of the effect of rajas and tamas. That is why he is doing meditation on the virat root. So you should focus your mind on the gross form of the Lord. Uh, so this is what this is Loka's meaning. So, uh, uh, so we understood what is the point. And Bhagavatam, it is said uh, again. You, you know, we we try to understand why he is doing also. That's why I gave you this explanation that he is doing it for the benefit of others. He is doing it out of curiosity. It's not the desire for him to practice this yogic process because he is the disciple of whom? He is the disciple of Shukade Goswami. Okay. All this is in just the context so you understand why Parikshit Maharaj is asking this question even though he is a pure devotee of the Lord. Because these are questions that should come to a person who is reading this chapter. So that's why I made it clear first, first half itself for you that this is the reason. Now Prabhupada is saying one may fix the mind on the gross material or the external feature of the Lord. The different parts of the gigantic form of the Lord are going to be described in the following verses. The materialistic men, they are very anxious to have some mystic powers as a result of controlling process. But the real purpose of yogic regulation is to eradicate. They may want some mystic potencies. They may want some mystic powers. And that is why a yogi may do to get that mystic uh, mystic yoga, I mean, he they may just want to, uh, you know, become the smallest of the smallest. So many things are there, right? The yogic mystic process can do for you. But again, Prabhupada clarifies that the important reason why yogic regulation should be followed is why to eradicate the accumulated dirty things like lust, anger, all that, all such material contamination has to be uh, taken out of the heart. To clear that dust. Uh, that is the reason. That is the purpose of this Ashtanga Yoga. To clear that dust. Um, so again. Even if you have to do yogic process. You cannot do it a standalone. You need to have what element. Even if it is a tinge of it. You should have that little bit. What is that little bit we spoke about? Anybody? Otherwise, the yogic process will not be successful. If that little bit is not there, little bit of what? Bhakti. Bhakti. Little bit of bhakti. We spoke about Naishkarmiyam, Appi, Archita, Varjitam. Uh, so, where we spoke 1.5.12, we talked about the point, even Nishtam Karma Yoga requires bhakti. It cannot be successful. I think uh, some construction work is happening in the background. Are you disturbed? Are you able to hear it? Okay, uh, we will see how much you can do. I mean, I don't know. So that person just started to come here. Well, started to work on it. Let's we, can see. Hear. we can't hear the construction work. We oh, can you hear can't? Okay. 
We can hear you properly. <laughs> only I am able to hear it. <laughs> all right. Mm, all right. So uh, this person is what this so this materialistic person. He may have this intention to do this yogic process for attaining the mystic potencies, but Prabhupada makes it a point to say that, oh, you know what? These things are, this yogic regulation is done so that person's uh, material contaminations are removed. Okay. So he is therefore recommended to fix his gross materialistic mind. Uh, and, uh, you know, by focusing on the Virat Rup, he'd be able to realize the potency of the Lord. As soon as the potencies are understood, then uh, one automatically advances to the next stage where uh, this stage is full realization becomes possible for him. So why does he have to meditate on the Virat? If one's heart is contaminated by Rajas and Tamas or products of Rajas and Tamas, he has to meditate. Now, why he has to meditate? That is coming up in the 24th sloka. So it is saying the gigantic, the 24th translation says, the gigantic manifestation of the phenomenal material world as a whole is a person's body of the absolute truth, wherein the universal result, resultant past, present and future of material time is experienced. So there is this word Visheshaha that is used here. Mm, that means Samashti Virat. So this is, this is what we should take. Mm, meaning... What is the, uh, initially Lord is there, okay. So if, I'm just giving you a background. And he wants to do creation. So he took uh, the Purusha Avatar. Then after that, what did he do? That is Karna, Daksha, Vishnu. Because of him, Prakriti is agitated and Mahat and all that is created. And then after that, from those elements, Maya Devi uh, will be creating big, big Brahm Brahmadas. And then Karna Dakshay Vishnu is entering in the form of Garbo Dakshay Vishnu into those Brahmandas. And Garbo Dakshay Vishnu is an Amsha, Amsha avatar of Karna Dakshay Vishnu. So he is uh, Pradyumna Vyuha. So after that, what happened? He is laying down. And Garbo Dakshay Vishnu is lying down there in the water, causal ocean. And then uh, how, how many, if you were to ask how many legs, how many uh, hands this Garbo Dakshay Vishnu is having? Thousands and thousands of hands and legs. And then what happened? Based upon that uh, structure of Garbo Dakshaya Vishnu, there is creation of the 14 material, material uh, 14 planetary systems. And uh, what is the shape of that? It is shaped in a way the Garbo Dakshaya Vishnu looks. Okay, so this is uh, clearly explained. This, this will be clearly talked about, I think, in uh, 2.5, that is Canto 2 and Chapter 5. So that means... This creation, this material creation is done in the form of Virat. Virat is looking in the form of Garbhodaksha Vishnu. This is the point we would eventually come to conclusion. So uh, that's why I explained this. I'll repeat it once again because this is new to you. So initially Lord is there, okay. So now he wants to do creation. So he took this Purusha Avatar for creation. And then after that, what did he do? So that is, who's that Vishnu Purusha Avatar? Karnodaksha Vishnu. And because of him, Prakriti is agitated. Mahat and everything is created. Those elements we'll be seeing in detail in second chapter, second canto, fifth chapter. And now, after that, after those elements are created, from that, a big, big Brahmandas are going to be created from the force of Karno Daksha Vishnu. And this Karno Daksha Vishnu, in the form of Garbo Daksha Vishnu, will be entering uh, those Brahmandas. And who's Garbo Daksha Vishnu? He's the Amsha Avatar of Karno Daksha Vishnu. And uh, then what happened? Uh, I told you he'd be, uh, he 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 uh, lie in the fossil ocean. And uh, if you look at his structure, he has thousands of hands and legs. And based on the structure of uh, Garbhadakshaya Vishnu, we have the 14 planetary systems created. Now, uh, this material creation, if you were to ask this question, you know, this material creation is done in the form of Virat. And Virat is looking uh, in the form of Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. So, this this is the form one has to meditate on, the Virat Rup, which is nothing but the creation, the sum total of creation. And this is that form we have to, this yogi has to meditate. Vishesha means Virat Deha. Um, so, that is why the, 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 it is the big uh, gigantic manifestation where the whole creation is existing. This person whose mind is agitated by Rajas and Tamas, 
uh, he has to meditate on this gross form, the sum total form. So everything, even in Viputi Yuga, if you see in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord is saying, I am this banyan tree among the trees. I am Prahlad among the Asuras. I am Indra among the Devatas. Devatas, And then he is all. And finally he says, my Viputi, it is my manifestation only. If you are able to see every object as the Viputi of the Lord, that is every object in this material world is the Viputi of the Lord. If you start to meditate in this way, then what will happen? Can you uh, understand my question, dear devotees? If you are seeing, there is water. And Krishna says, I am the taste in water. So each and every object like that, if you are going to uh, take it as a vibhuti of the Lord and meditate upon that object as the uh, vibhuti of the Lord, then what will happen to you? You are seeing everything as Lord's potencies, dear devotees. So in that case, what will happen to you? That means, yeah, go ahead. Matiji, you will get purified and yeah. all your anarthas will um, slowly diminish. Correct. So, you will be seeing the Lord in everything. Correct. So that means there is no competition. There is no enviousness because everything is Lord's potencies. If something is very nice, say somebody is the top of a class, his intelligence is the vibhuti of the Lord. If you are going to see in this way, that student, whoever is having the intelligence or some Bhagavatam speaker or some speaker, you know, he's speaking Bhagavatam. Why? Because of mercy of the Lord. If you are able to think in this way, then what happened? This particular student, he is very shining, very nicely. He answers all questions. And you are seeing him as a vibhuti of the Lord. He's doing it because Krishna's mercy is there upon him. It's, if you're seeing a beautiful girl, for example, then what do you think? It is also a vibhuti or manifestation of Lord's energy. Then you don't get lust. If you're seeing a person who answers brilliantly all the questions, you won't get enviousness because you know the intelligence is uh, vibhuti or it's, it's because of Lord's mercy or it's his Lord's potency. So if you're able to think it in this way, then as Mataji said, your anarthas are going to diminish, meaning you are not going to have envi enviousness, you are not going to have lust, karma, even if you see a beautiful girl, because you know that beautiful girl is a potency of the Lord. Then heart is getting purified in this process. That is what is happening to this Virat Yogi. That is why one should meditate on Virat. What is in Virat, what we are doing? We are seeing everything is the opulence of the Lord. In, this meditator is seeing every limb. Uh, so he's seeing that in the body of the Lord. Then that kind of person's heart is becoming purified by uh, meditating on this Virat. And finally, he will come to a stage where he could worship on Garbhodaksha Vishnu, who is the beautiful form of Vishnu. Then his life is successful. So, Dharana is tender. Again, if you look at the stages, uh, Dharana is still a tender only. The most powerful thing is Samadhi. So, for him to get to Samadhi, he has to perfect Dharana. Uh, so, this is the point, dear devotees. We have to understand, uh, even Bhagavad Gita says, the omnipotent Lord has his transcendental eyes heads and other bodily parts distributed everywhere. He can see, hear or touch or manifest anywhere and everywhere for he is present everywhere as the super soul of the infinite uh, inf infinitesimal souls. Although he has a particular abode in this absolute world. The relative world is also his phenomenal representation because he is nothing but an, an expansion of the transcendental energy. So Prabhupada is discussing in this uh, sloka, how Lord is expanding his energies into potencies, his potencies into various forms. Although he is in the abode, his energy is distributed everywhere, just as sun is localized and is expanded everywhere. Since the hmm, rays of the sun, being non-different from the sun, are accepted as the expansions of sun's disk. And then he quotes uh, Vishnu Puran also to state about Lord's potencies. Uh, and then, uh, you, you know, it is being said that um, the phenomenal manifestation of this gigantic universe is a part of his Virat body. He's having a big body 
and uh, in that Virat body, it's located all the floating planetary systems. And uh, Prabhupada clarifies the point that this Virat meditation is required because less intelligent people, they cannot perceive the transcendental form of the Lord, which is Sachidananda, but they are astounded by the different energies uh, that are there. Uh, you know, they are, they are astonished by this Virat form, which is so big and it has this, uh, and it's an imagined form where the yogi imagines the part the body of the Lord to have different, uh, and his different limbs to have different things. This is what this materialistic person is uh, astonished by. But they can't, they because they are less intelligent, they can't say, oh my God, this beautiful form of Krishna, the twofold bending form of Krishna is so good, I have to start, made. no. They, they can't perceive that, but they can perceive this big form. The Asuras cannot recognize the existence of the Lord, although there is vivid descriptions of the Lord in the revealed scriptures, although the Lord incarnates and exhibits his uncommon strength and energy, although he is accepted as the supreme personality of Godhead by learned scholars like Vyasadeva, Narada, Asita and Devala, um, uh, you know, this, this form cannot be perceived by the Asuras. Even though many scholars and many saints and sages uh, talk about his glory, the Asuras cannot accept him. The Asuras don't even accept any evidential proof from the re revealed scriptures, nor they recognize the authority of the great Acharya. They want to see with their own eyes at once. Therefore, they can see the gigantic body of the Lord as Virat, which will answer their challenge. And since they are accustomed to paying homage to superior material strength like the tiger, elephant, lightning, they can offer respect to the Supreme Lord or the, sorry, Virat Rupa. That is why Prabhupada is giving this beautiful reason to say that some neophyte yogis, they don't have a belief in the shams in the form of the Lord, but they have faith in something more. They think, oh, this is more powerful. Also, they want to see directly. So they can see directly the Virat Rupa, which is very powerful, right? So that is why they can accept it initially. How they can see the Virat Rupa directly? It is like uh, an atlas. Are, are you all familiar with the atlas? You don't actually go to that place, but you're able to see Australia by sitting in your bedroom, or you're able to see New Zealand or any other place. Kenya, by sitting in your bedroom, I can see all of that. And I think, oh yeah, it's not that you've gone to Australia, but you're imagining it. Like that, this Virat Rupa meditator is imagining the planetary systems. He's able to see it. In the Atlas, you're able to see it, right? Like the places. You're not physically seeing it, but you're seeing it. Like that, this Virat Rupa meditator, he's seeing this body of the Lord to have these different uh, different things. Patala, Rasatala, all that. Uh, you know, he's able to see it in the body of the Virat Rupa. And he's comfortable with that. That, that's what is the reason that Prabhupada is giving. See, uh, through this, what happens ultimately, he, he's directly seeing the Virat Rupa, which is very powerful. They want to directly see it. These people, these neophyte yogis, they cannot accept Shama Sundra form because they can't see it. Un until your eyes is anointed with a prema, you're, you cannot see the Supreme Lord. So they these people, they want to see it. Oh, I want to see it. If they want to see it, they go through this Virat Rupa imagination uh, where they are able to imagine. Okay? So that's what, that's how the purification is happening and uh, Prabhupada is giving that reason. <clears throat> I know we are running out on time. What I'll do is there's just uh, more to this. But anyways, let me uh, just come to the today's words maybe. Uh, but you all ho hopefully got an idea of what we are talking about um, and that, that's good enough. Mm, so the point that we need to understand is why we have to meditate on Virat Rupa to get rid of enviousness, the competitive mentality, the competitive nature, so on and so forth. Okay. And now because of this, our heart is going to get purified. And then at one point, you will become eligible to worship the Lord's personal form, who is Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. So now uh, we have learned answers to these questions about how to do this Virat Rupa meditation, where, uh, where and uh, Yadrishi. Three questions got answered. Where does one have to meditate? Uh, the gross form of the Lord. Uh, and uh, that is the Virat Rupa. And uh, you know, what is that object of meditation? That object of meditation is Virat Rupa. And then uh, we also got an answer of how to do that, meaning the sitting posture and all that got clarified. Now, uh, we are going to just, the next few verses are just going to talk about um, 
the Virat truth having that uh, planetary system uh, in the body of the Lord. That is the sum of total energy we said, right? So now um, you have to see all these uh, planetary systems are located in the limbs of the Virat truth. This is what is going to come ahead. Um, first, we'll be talking about um, the objects of the senses, senses and the controlling deities of the senses. This would be the sequence with which it is coming. I can explain you uh, in the next class what it means. But basically, if you were to look at 26th or 27th verse, it's talking about the fact Patala is at the bottom of the feet of the Lord. Rasatala is at the heel and the toe of the Lord. Mahatala is in the ankles of the Lord. Talatala is in the shank. So these are the, uh, this is where these planetary systems are situated. As far as Patala, Rasatala, Mahatala goes, this is where it is situated at the bottom of the feet, heels and toes, ankles and chunks. Uh, so that's that's what is the explanation. Here in the 27th verse, the knees of the universal form are the planetary systems of the Sutala and two thighs of the Vitala and Atala planetary systems. The hips are the Mahatala and the outer space is the, uh, it is seen in the depression of the navel. So, 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 Suttala is at the knees, the uh, Vitala is at the lower part of the two thighs, Atala is in the upper part of the two thighs, Mahatala is in the hips, and Bhuvarloka is at the navel. Like that, you are going to see the different uh, different locations of these different lokas or the planetary systems in the next coming few verses. So, dear devotees, I think it's good enough. I uh, hope you got a good overview of what we spoke about. We will conclude now. Manchya kalpa tarubhya shri atripasam rupi eva cha patita anam pavani yo vaishnavi yo namo namaka ananta koti vaishnava vrindu ki jai namacharya shri la harita saku ki jai shri la prabhupad ki jai kaur bhakta vrindu ki jai all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to shri la prabhupad all glories to our acharya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mataji thank you so much uh, for explaining and simplifying. Um, uh, I'm sure a lot of people were struggling to understand, but I think after today, they have probably got the gist of um, how um, uh, the egg-shaped universe has come into a um, form. Uh, Madhiji, I had a question. So uh, in the Virat Swaru, the super soul is the Garbhodaya Vishnu. Uh, and in us, the um, super Super soul is uh, the Vishnu Shiro and the four-handed form. So, Shiro Daksha. Shiro Daksha Vishnu is an Amsha of Garbo Daksha Vishnu. It's an Ansha. And uh, Garbo Daksha Vishnu is an Ansha of Karuna. Uh, Karna Daksha Vishnu. Oh. I just needed that clarification again. Thank you very much. Are sure. there any other questions or comments from the group? Hare Krishna Mataji, Hare Krishna everyone. Thank you for this uh, detailed uh, information you gave uh, about all these uh, Vriyatrup. I was a bit confused, you know, but uh, it's, I didn't know that the yogis, they have to meditate on the Vriyatrup. That I didn't know. And also, so the, the, the yogis, um, they are very elevated souls because um, first they have to meditate on the Vriyatrup of the Lord. Then they can get their cities that they need, I think. Isn't it? Am I right, Mataji? Uh, so, see, the initial Virat Rup meditation is needed for a person who has not perfected the dharana process, for, for a person whose heart is still filled with tamas and rajas, for that person to get out of this rajas and tamas. If you look at it, rajas and tamas means envy, competitive nature, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So what he's mm -hmm. doing, he's meditating on this object of Virat Rup, meaning the, he, he, the body of the Lord is there and the limbs he is seeing, oh, everything is the vibhuti of the Lord. So what is there for mm -hmm. me to get? It is all the potency of the Lord. Slowly he is understanding one by one that, you know, nothing nothing is without Lord. So he is understanding the glory of the Lord by meditating on the Virat Rup. In that process, he is just getting away with the quality of tamas and uh, mm, ignorance. Slowly, it's mm. going away. Now he had perfected this, uh, you know, coming out of Rajas and Tamas. He's now ready to even 
go to the stage of meditating on the uh, personal feature of the Lord, which is Garbhadaksha Vishnu. He's ready. Slowly when he understands, oh yes, this is Vibhuti of the Lord. This is Vibhuti. So there's nothing in this world uh, that I can do without Lord's potency. He's able to understand and come to a conclusion. Yes, uh, you know, it's just his heart is getting purified slowly, slowly, slowly. And then he yeah, can just, is, yeah, go so ahead. Man. It, is, but it is difficult for, for uh, people who haven't got the knowledge about the Lord. It's difficult for them to go directly to the Vedat rope, right? So uh, if we just somebody who, who tries to understand the Lord, we just tell him go and uh, meditate on the Virat Rupa. That would be very difficult for that person. Yeah, this they yogi is a neophyte it. yogi. Yes, this yogi is yes. a neophyte yogi. This neophyte mm -hmm. yogi is the one who's meditating on the Virat Rupa. If you are asking mm -hmm. an advanced yogi, why would he do that? He's already advanced. So he's already no, no, meditating. No. Not not advanced yogi. I mean ordinary people. Ordinary people. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the ordinary people means less intelligent people, Prabhupada says, they can't understand the personal feature of the Lord. Yes. So mm -hmm. those people, they will be attracted. Oh, the big gigantic form. Yes, it looks so huge. He is the Lord. I can understand. Oh, there are his limbs that are having different planetary. They, they'll be so astonished by that, it seems, Prabhupada says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of that astonishment, they will go into meditating this form. Again, yeah. these are less fortunate people, Mataji. Obviously, yeah. whoever is doing this, uh, we are all into Bhakti Yoga. I mean, for us, uh, it's just the personal feature of the Lord. Because we are fortunate enough, we have the mercy of uh, Sri Guru and Gauranga. Because of that, we don't have to go through this process. But there are so many of them uh, that are uh, not having that mercy yet. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Hopefully, by your mercy, if some uh, more people attend these classes, by your mercy, they will come to understand this process and then they may take to it. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Sure, Mataji. It also took a very long time for me to understand all these nuances in Bhagavatam. It is only mercy, Mataji. Nothing but mercy. Uh, everything yes. in Bhagavatam uh, needs mercy. Uh, and understanding. This uh, uh, canto two is very, very uh, a bit intrigued to understand. It's difficult. It's yes. not really easy to understand it. But you explain very nicely about oh, this. No, no. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. No, Mataji. It's all your uh, blessings. And today is my Thank birthday. Uh, so I would oh, appreciate oh, special oh, blessings if possible. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Thank you. Mataji. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, uh, so my nice. purpose should be that I will serve more and more Vaishnavas and please Guru and Gauranga. Nothing but I just have to please everyone. Being born in this world, my purpose is known. So I hopefully fulfill that uh, for my Guru Maharaj. That's all I care. <laughs> it's not my birthday birthday, but purpose of birthday is to understand why you are born. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you very much, Mataji. Uh, even on your birthday, you are doing this service. So we are really, oh, really blessed. This is all the more reason to do it. <laughs> we are really blessed to have you. And um, we all pray um, that um, you acquire more and more knowledge and distribute it so, so nicely and efficiently and generously with your time. I know you are so busy and it's uh, not easy for you to join at this time. But you always... Um, come and join and uh, you're very keen to make things um, easy for us uh, us neophytes so uh, uh, we are really blessed to have your association thank you thank, thank you so much Mataji. continue My the good work that you are doing thank you Mataji with your uh, motivation and inspiration I hope to continue uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is everything Mataji we have to focus and understanding every line of Srila Prabhupada and Aracharyas so I will try my best uh, to share whatever I know. And uh, wherever I am stuck, kindly pardon me. I am also a growing devotee, learning devotee like all of you. Thank you. We are just walking on your footsteps, Matthew. Thank you so much. Can I request Arya Govind Prabhu? Prabhu, is it possible for you to end the session today? Hare Krishna. Maybe Arya Govind Prabhu is having internet challenges like uh, we all are having today because it's really raining very much here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Indulekha Mataji, your uh, uh, internet is very stable. Please kindly end the session today.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, everyone. Sorry, I had to move from the kitchen. It's a bit noisy there. Yes, so thank you so much, Mataji. Very nice class. Um, the philosophy as usual. Um, sometimes um, we may think, okay, this person has, uh, has been talking for like an hour, 45 minutes or 50 minutes. But the amount of time, the, the length of time it takes someone to do the research before being able to talk. Because, you know, um, this class is very nice, but, but in other classes, you know, there, there are other participants who kind of um, attack you in a way, like looking for praman for everything. Where did you find it? Who said this? Who said that? But this Mataji, there is no room for this kind of thing because she is very, very well prepared. So um, I will thank her again. And I think we should uh, all unmute and say, um, for example, for her, and then wish her a very happy birthday. We can all also sing the happy birthday song for her. Okay? So. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Okay, now the happy birthday. Hare Krishna to you, Hare Krishna to you, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna to you. May Lord Krishna bless you, may Lord Krishna bless you, may Lord Krishna bless you and takes you all the way home. Hare Ball. Hari Thank you for making my day. Thank you. All Hari glories Hari. to Srila Prabhupada for getting a beautiful family like all of you. Really, Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mataji. You. Zuleika Mataji. You've been Thank like you. a very, very, uh, you know, inspiring devotee for me personally. And a lot to learn. No, I'm inspired you. by you. I, that's what I said. Even you have to do something as you drop it and listen to your class. That's for sure. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. We'll say the Sama so. prayer. Yeah? Thank Bain you, Pak Prabhu. Thank, Thank you. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. All glory to your service, Mataji. Kritika, all glory to your service. It's like you're constantly there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glory to the devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Have a beautiful day today. Have a really good Krishna conscious day. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.